Hello, and welcome to my bedroom, which is a line I'm sure my wife is going to be thrilled about when she watches this on the toilet later. I'm a Sun and Nomad, and we are live in front of a live studio audience. They are absolutely going bananas. We've I've decided to record this live over on Twitch because I'm trying something new and I want to get out of my comfort zone and I want to try something different. Today I want to talk about the TWID and I want to specifically talk about the PvP section of the TWID that was released on February 15th, 2024. There's a lot to talk about obviously, but I did want to focus just on PvP because that is what people expect me to talk about. That is what I built my channel on. And I think there's a lot of nuance that was displayed in the TWID. I can't, I, okay, I cannot keep saying TWID. I'm sorry, chat. I got so far in a straight face. There's so much that was said in the TWAB that I think a lot of people are missing. And I want to give my honest reaction, give my take, which historically on this channel has been very neutral and not very biased. The most biased opinion that I have about Destiny 2 is that Titans will forever be a problem and they shouldn't be allowed to exist. Without further ado, let's get into it. Hey folks, the PvP Strike team has a lot to talk about in the coming weeks. In this section, we're covering the changes to PvP specific tuning for weapon types, exotic weapons, abilities, and special ammo generation. What we'll talk about here today represents a large macro pass designed to begin to address several of these concerns, and it will be followed by additional micro tuning in the future. Let's identify our goals, what the symptoms are in terms of how our gameplay is affected, and then we can discuss the root causes and the corresponding changes. This is different from previous communication because they're trying to outline what I assume to be their decided vision upon about the Crucible, which is something that's been really lacking from PvP communication up until this point, because one of the things that I always had an issue with with giving feedback, and I think a few other creators have expressed this as well, is that we can give all the feedback all the live long day, and I'm sure you, all of you in the chat can as well, but without knowing what we're trying to head towards, it kind of makes all the feedback being given useless. So I'm really excited to see what they have to say here. Help players to more clearly understand the sequence of events that led to their death so that they can more easily learn how to improve. Okay, that's, that's, that, wow. Goal number two, alter the weapon sandbox to account for the increased average skill of our player base by reducing the amount of high reward, low risk options. And goal number three, encourage primary weapon mastery to be an aspirational pursuit for players. As we've increased the prevalence and strength of some sandbox elements, the ability to clearly understand what is happening from a target's perspective has suffered. It is increasingly common to be defeated instantly or so quickly that there's no time to react. And often so many different things are happening that it is nearly impossible to determine the sequence of events that killed you. When a defeated player has gone, has difficulty recognizing and re reacting to how they were defeated, it creates a situation where it feels like there was nothing they could have done, making it hard to learn what to do better next time. Additionally, while the average skill of our players has crept up over the years, the weapon sandbox has not grown alongside it. For example, a much higher percentage of our players can hit optimal time to kill with SMGs, peak shoot with hand cannons, or blint with wish ender today than could several years ago. I love that they just said, look it up. We're not spending any time here telling you what blinting is. The more cultured amongst you will know this as encooching. In large part, this is because a certain amount of forgiveness was baked into many primary weapons to allow more players to utilize them at their full potential. For example, high reward weapons like precision SMGs or aggressive hand cannons only requiring 67% critical hits to achieve optimal time to kill and wish ender allowing you to follow up with the bow swap with a body shot from a hand cannon. This leniency allows players to make mistakes and still benefit from the full play strength of the playstyle. That made sense when the average player skill was lower. But in the current ecosystem, a far larger number of players can take advantage of those benefits. This is manifesting itself in multiple play places, but it is most noticeable in the significant compression of the skill gap at high levels of play. So basically, there's too much cheesy shit, and we're reining it in. Finally, at high levels of play, things like high body shot damage, generous aim assist, primary weapon flinch, and low critical hit requirements all contribute to the feeling that putting in the time to improve your skill with the primary weapons is generally not worth the effort. And I don't think there's a single person in the chat that would disagree with that. And I certainly don't disagree with it because why would you bother when this game at its very worst moments literally aims for you? Aim assist cones are, are, are really, really, really high. With many meta primary weapons, hitting optimal or near optimal time to kill is less representative of mastery of the weapon and is instead merely an expectation of standard play. Similarly, at lower levels of play, players can still lose relatively quickly to an inaccurate opponent, which minimizes the time they have to figure out the sandbox and learn. 
often making them feel like they are playing higher skilled players than they really are. Which makes sense, because there's no such thing as a high skill titan. <laughs> These symptoms are all generated by a handful of root causes, each generally linked to the others in a cycle of balance that encourages us to touch all of them at once if we're making big changes, or in smaller increments if we are modifying things individually. So, we have certain ability builds with either higher uptime or higher potency than we believe is healthy. To help keep those builds in check, we've provided a near constant availability of special ammo, which means there is always a surplus of one-shot kill weapons on the field. And to keep primary weapons competitive, we have made primary weapons f highly lethal, fast killing, and in general also very forgiving. All of that leads to a high percentage of deaths in our sandbox where, from the target's perspective, it feels like there was nothing they could have done differently. From my perspective, and I'm going to be quite biased here, I think this is incredible because they are not only outlining the ethos that they want to have for the Crucible generally by identifying some of the most common pain points that people have been complaining about en masse, it seems like, forever, but they also seem to have a very keen understanding of what the problem is, what is causing the problems, and how it's affecting players. I think the biggest thing that they're saying and they're zeroing in on and they've been talking about uh, a lot and they've repeated a lot is to help players more clearly understand the sequence of events that led to their death so that they can easily learn how to improve. And then at the final line here, every single thing that is currently in the sandbox, everything that is tuned, PvP as we know it currently today, is leading to a high percentage of deaths in our sandbox where from the target's perspective, it feels like there was nothing they could have done differently. Simply put, how many times have you died in PvP and you've just sat there thinking, wait, what just happened? As Nero is saying in, in, the, in the chat right now, they are finally saying the quiet part out loud. They are not holding back with respect to what's wrong with the sandbox right now, what they have identified is wrong with the sandbox, and what they want to do to address that. But for the people who either play PvP for Pinnacles, occasionally lower skill players, people who just kind of dabble whenever the Iron Banner's around, it's really hard to step into the Crucible and have a good idea of where you stand because of the everything that's currently in the sandbox. And I think that is the main thing they're trying to attack, is like, we don't want you to come in and have no clue what to, to do to get better. Which, to my eyes, as somebody as, who is very, very improvement focused, is nothing but music to my ears. To begin to address these issues, the following changes will be applied to the Crucible starting with update 7.3.5 on March 5. Player health, big one. Alarm bells ringing already. Player health will be increased by 30 hit points in base Crucible. So players will have 100 health up from 70 and 116 to 130 shield depending on the player's resilience value. So we've now gone from a max of 200 or 201, depending on which spreadsheet that you follow, up to 130 or 131 after rounding. But we're not done. Ability cooldowns. These values combined with the changes to the mod economy earlier this season will move us to a place where ability uptime is healthier for the Crucible. Melee, Grenade and Class Ability cooldowns now have a 15% penalty applied to them in Crucible only. Super cooldowns now have a 20% penalty applied to them in Crucible only. So you're going to get less abilities up and your supers are going to take longer to charge. These raise their own issues which we'll talk about. On the surface it's going to mean less ability spam in your general day to day. The super cooldown is incredibly concerning with respect to tier 5 supers. Certain tier 1 supers are just not at all valuable anymore. But knowing this, this is this probably means that they're aware of exactly what's going to happen to the timers and they'll probably tune that as well in the future. But we're just talking about what's what we see in front of us right now. Ability damage. To account for the increased player health and the reduced uptime, we have made some general changes to melee and super damage and one grenade to make sure that we man maintain moment to moment mus muscle memory and retain our general current general rules of most supers killing in one shot and melee's killing in two. Supers increase base super damage by 31%. Increase base melee damage by 16%, increase arc flux grenade by damage by 16%. They're basically bringing them up to match the player health value being increased by a similar percentage. However, the base damage super going up by 31% is interesting. But again, there are concerns about supers generally, but we'll get to that later. Primary weapon archetypes. To maintain the same optimal time to kill rates as the current sandbox with the new HP values. Okay, I'm going to just read this again so everybody understands what's going on. To maintain the same optimal time to kill rates as the current sandbox with the new health point hit point values, and to place an increased emphasis on precision, 
all primary weapons except bows will have their critical hit damage increase. So, how fast do you normally kill with a high impact pulse rifle? 0.67 seconds. How fast do you kill with a hand cannon? 0.87 seconds. How fast do you kill with a scout rifle? Trick question, you don't. Basically this change is saying, we're gonna scale everything's damage up to account for the newer time to kill, to, to, to account for the newer health values so that the optimal time to kill, basically all crits, doesn't get affected. But your body shot damage is gonna be left behind. Pulses, auto, sidearm, scout rifles. Increase crit damage by 14%. Hand cannons increase crit damage by 10%. Reduce body shot damage by 5%. So if you want to be optimal with your hand cannons, you have to hit your shots. And that goes for pretty much everything. You have to hit your shots. Reduce fringe dealt to players by projectile impact by 12.5% and explosive payload by 10%. Submachine guns increase crit hit damage by 12.5%. Reduce body shot damage by 3%. And bows reduce base damage by 15% because in this meta, which is basically, let's like everybody knows that this is basically checkmates rules, bows were a severe outlier for their base damage, especially in a world where special was not regularly coming. What this is saying is that if you want to kill, you have to go for the head. There's more of a discrepancy between the optimal time to kill and what I would probably consider or classify the average time to kill. The average time to kill might be if, if it's a high impact pulse, you've gone from 0.67 seconds optimal to maybe say 0.9 or, or 1 second. This will probably push that to 1.2. Don't quote me on the math, I'm just trying to give you an example of how much slower it will be. Special ammo acquisition. After a lengthy test period in the Crucible Labs, we are ready to move to this, move the special ammo meter system into the wider Crucible. Now this is probably the biggest shakeup to PvP that we've seen since Destiny 2 Year 1. This is going to change everything. You will start every game, all game types including round based modes like Dominion, with two kills worth of special ammo for your chosen weapon. Instead of two kills worth of special ammo being granted every time you respawn, you will earn more ammo by filling up a special ammo meter with points given for getting kills, assists, or completing objectives. Getting 100 points grants you two kills worth of special ammo for your chosen weapon. So here are some base point values of 100 is the highest. For your base point values, you get 23 for kills, 10 for assists, 10 for deaths, control zone capture 14, heavy armor pulls 8, elimination dominion point values 38 for kills, 16 for assists, 16 for deaths, heavy armor pulls is 10. Now these are scaled up because obviously these are shorter rounds and every action is a lot more impactful. 3v3 respawn modes, also this is 3v3 so there's, there's that too. 3v3 respawn modes, uh, survival clash, counter and rush, 26 for kills, 20, 12 for assists, 11 for deaths, Rumble, 30 for kills, none for assists, none for deaths, which I find to be very interesting. Countdown, charge armor is 20, charge diffuse 40, charge detonate is 70, which means that killing with a primary weapon, or killing generally, is not going to get you special ammo. It's only the objective. So you actually have to play the objective if you want special, which I think is a really cool little change there that's going to be overlooked by a lot of people. Now, general notes, kills from special ammo weapons and heavy ammo weapons do not grant any points towards special ammo meter progress. So you can use all the special and heavy ammo that you have, but it's not going to count towards getting more, which I think is a very, very important to help limit snowballing. Special ammo has to be earned now. Like from my perspective, if you want to encourage players to exhibit a certain behavior, give them a carrot to chase. In this case, getting kills, getting assists, getting deaths, controlling captures points, heavy ammo pulls. This just means you're going to get you're going to get some progress for getting involved. Obviously, the better you are, the quicker your progress. And that is that is bringing up a lot of points with respect to snowballing. I think it's a very legitimate concern. I do want to talk about that after we go through the changes as well. Special weapon archetypes. To offset the increased health and partially make up for the reduced uptime, we have increased the base damage of several special ammo weapons, trace rifle, shotguns, fusions, increased base damage by 20%. So it's basically a bit more of a buff, but it's in line or it's the idea is to keep it in line with the increased player health. Glaives. Increased projectile damage by 20%, increased melee damage by 16%. Congratulations to the five Glaive users in who are watching this video and the one Glaive user in the stream. Uh, you weren't left behind. Now, after the twit was released, I asked people in my Discord and on Twitter, I know, big mistake, as to what they thought were their biggest, as to what their biggest concerns were about everything that was announced. And whilst a lot of people had different opinions, it seemed like PvP players generally seemed to like the changes and the PvE players were a little bit more concerned, which 
isn't all that surprising when you consider that Bungie, specifically Joe Blackburn, did say in, in the video that he made, the face cam video, the YouTube style video that he made, that he wants PvP and the PvP strike team to make Crucible more tuned towards PvP players. After all, why alienate the few players who are actually still remaining here? It seemed like a good enough strategy at the time. However, I want to talk about some of the community concerns that I've got here on my other monitor. I'm not just looking here for the sake of looking here. There's a reason to this. The first community concern I want to bring up is this. The question is, is this going to result, are these changes going to result in PvP having more emphasis on skill? Obviously, skill means different things to a lot of different people, but basically, at a very basic level, the answer is yes. The tuning that they've announced is being done to emphasize crit damage, headshots. We've had an increase in player health, we've had an increase in precision damage, but we've had no relative increase in base damage either. So in theory, the optimal time to kills will still be the same as long as you make sure you're perfect. However, because the body shot damage is going to be lesser, you may find that your average fire flight is going to be a little bit slower. Now for me personally, with my experience in Checkmate, both on PC and console, because those lobbies are very, very different, what I like about this, what this really means in, in practice, is that if somebody shoots you first, let's say they shoot you from the side or behind or wherever, and you can't see them, you can turn around and you can fight back and you might actually have a decent chance of winning if you can hit your shots better than they can. And I like that because it really, really emphasizes the fact that you need to know how to use your guns, you need to be within range, you need to have good positioning, good strafing, good all FBS fundamentals come into play when there's jeopardy involved. And too often it feels like, especially with in the case of something like Igneous Hammer, it's one crit two body. No, it's two crit one body. I can't math. 80, 80, 50. It also means that you're less likely to be beamed by SMGs because they have a very low base damage and the crit damage okay, we'll still be pretty, pretty nasty to deal with, but they better be absolutely perfect with it. So that leads into the second community concern that was widely posted is that will the game slow down because of the longer TTK, the longer effective or average TTK? Will the TTKs feel the same? The TTKs will only really feel the same if you can land your crits. That's the way I'm interpreting the changes that they put out there. The game will feel slower for a lot of people. It will, but not by a great amount. I don't think anyways. From my personal, and I'm just talking anecdotally, your experience may vary. You may have a completely different perspective on this, but when I played Checkmate personally, I didn't notice a su substantial increase in how long it took to execute a gunfight. Maybe slightly more, not, not, a terrible amount. But it one thing I'll say for sure is that it is not Destiny 2 Year One. Far from it. If you want to have a look, I'm sure the video is still online on YouTube showing you just how slow those fights were. Another community concern is will there be bigger chances with snowballings due to specials versus no specials? The answer is yes, unfortunately, because there will be times and moments in certain games where somebody will have a special on the field, like a sniper, and they will be able to clear a field a lot more effectively than somebody without special, and it will feel like you can't really fight back. That being said, again, from my own personal experience with Checkmate and what I've seen so far, albeit just in labs it wasn't rolled out to the wider crucible, is that you're not too far behind for too long, generally speaking. Especially if you play the zone, you get involved, you get some few kills, assists, it doesn't take you that long. You'd have to have a ridiculously bad game, like nothing's working for you, for you to feel like you're being snowballed against. Now, what will stop snowballing, what something, what people have been missing is that special ammo kills will not count towards your special meter. So you'll get your special, but that special ammo, any special ammo kills that you, you get will not contribute to your next batch of special ammo. What will contribute is assists. And I think that's something to, to keep in mind. You can get assists with your special ammo, you, but then you're using your special ammo on assists and you don't want to be using it for that because they're scarce and you want to use them for guaranteed kills. It's going gonna, it's gonna to force a rethink of a lot of players on how they play the Crucible. Quite often in low skill lobbies, they will sit back, they'll equip a pulse rifle, they'll scout rifle, just stay in the back and just hope for, for somebody to walk in front of their crosshairs. With these rules and these this special meter scoring, there is a direct incentive for you to get involved, run in, die even dying will help you get your special ammo above all else just shooting somebody with your teammate you don't even need to get the kills as long as you get involved you will get special so personally i don't think the balance of snowballing is going to be quite as severe as people are afraid of it is a legitimate concern and i'm not dismissing it at all um, but i would really like to see what this is going to feel like in practice before i say yes this is good or this is bad now the final community concern that i saw was will there be a rise in double primary and will that make the game feel worse 
Yes, there will be a rise in double farm rate. Absolutely, because when you don't have a special, you have a dead slot of a weapon. And that's a slot that could be taken up by a sidearm or an SMG or a uh, scout rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's running scout rifles. But the point is that why would you ever consider, for high level players at least, why would you ever consider not having something to deal with? To have loadout synergy, to have uh, all your engagement ranges covered, or at least three out of four engagement ranges covered, and just relying on one gun to, to manage your, your engagements. That's a lot of variance that you have to deal with. You're, you're kind of dice rolling. For me, my loadout going into, into checkmate will be no time to explain and heliocentric sidearm because that'll cover my mid to long range and my short range. And that's just how I'm gonna play. I'm willing to give up my special slot for that because that's just my play style, that's how I like to play Crucible. But for you, it could be different. Will it make the game feel worse though? I don't know. I don't think so, because ultimately optimal time to kills aren't changing. I personally would rather deal with two primaries than specials that kill me from nowhere, but that's just me. That's just me. It's, it's, it's completely dependent on who you ask. You will have a certain opinion on this. I personally am very neutral about it. I like playing double primary, but I understand it's not everybody's cup of tea either. Now, there is a lot more community concerns, but I don't want this video to be like 70 minutes long. So I want to go through some of the biggest pain points that I think that Checkmate is going to have, or Checkmate, or Cru Crucible Checkmate, or whatever you want to call this new Crucible, Crucible 3.0. Forgive me, but I am going to read this because I don't want, I don't want to mess this up more than I already have recording this live in front of a live studio audience. The first biggest pain point that I want to talk about is the fact that whatever semblance there was of build crafting PvP. Now, it was a very niche thing, you know, something we like to do on the Twitter and the Discord and the community, well, we like to joke about as well on the stream, is how much of a war criminal can you actually be with some of the builds that you have? So just the other day, we were looking at a, uh, in the Discord, a horribly, horribly Horrible build involving incendiary grenades and Skyburner's Oath. The title of the video was I Turn Skyburner's Oath into Cloud Strike. I'm gonna play a few seconds of it now on screen and also go check it out in the description below. And that was uh, upsetting, but in all the right ways <laughs> to watch. However, with these changes, with reduced ability uptime, basically what was already a very difficult thing to do before is gonna be basically dead now. For those of you who really like PvP build crafting, for those of you who like to go crazy, Unfortunately, the only place you're going to be able to do that is now in Mayhem. But even then, that's just super the game mode. There's no build crafting involved there. I do, I do feel for those players who have really spent a lot of time making off meta builds and, you know, having fun with Crucible that way. Another very big point that was raised by somebody in our community that I also share is that the reduction of special uptime means that there will be a lack of opportunity to practice getting good with special ammo weapons. You can go to the Cosmodrome and you can jump, snipe, Randall the Vandal all the live, live long day, but that is not gonna prepare you against ZK Mushroom in, in 6v6 or Frostbolt in Trials or any of these guys who are really, really good and on top of their game. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it is an unfortunate side effect of these changes and it's also counterintuitive with what the mission statement is for the PvP Strike Team. They want players to improve, they want to be able to see how they can improve. Unfortunately, one of the key tenets of actually improving in PvP is using the gun that you want to improve on. Yes, get good with your primaries, you'll get more special. Sure, but that doesn't change the fact that your special uptime is going to be lesser. Significantly lesser. So, you are going to have the devil of a time trying to improve your sniping trying to improve your fusion rifle timing, trying to improve your your approach with your shotguns. It's going to be it's going to be hard. And there's going to be there is going to be a really really bad situation with respect to special ammo usage of the rich getting richer and the poor staying where they are. And that's something that I hope that they figure out and address in some way. I don't know how they can do that without reverting some of the changes that they've made here. Another huge huge pain point that is I think everybody has brought this up is that in 3v3 in trials somebody gets special, you have no idea how close they are to getting special, how much special they have, how much special they have used, and then it just turns into a complete guessing game. Let's say it's it's 3-1, which is one of the most crucial trials score lines in anything, because if you lose that 3-1 and it becomes 4-1, the chances of a comeback are virtually nil. It, it can happen. I've done it 5v4, but I, I can count on maybe two hands how many times I've done turn a 4-1 into a 5-4. It's an exceedingly rare thing to do. It's a nigh-on impossible thing to do as a solo player. But if you're a 3-1 and you go into solo trials, or even in a team, and that one team has special and you don't, that's it, game over, you've lost the game. 
because they're able to wield weapons and options that you don't have and you have no counter to. And that can be fixed by having some sort of visual indicator about how much special ammo is on the field. That way you can employ strategies like baiting out a sniper shot or intentionally trying to use abilities to make certain positions untenable. Without that sort of information, it's just a pure RNG guessing game for the losing team and they're already in a difficult position as it is. The biggest pain point I would say more than anything else is that with less special on the field, super shut shutdowns are going to be incredibly difficult if not impossible for the average player. You're basically going to be forced into a situation now. Obviously the time with checkmate with with sort of the way the game's played, people got their supers towards the end of the game. So the timing wasn't necessarily an issue uh, because at this point people have had one or two or three rounds of special. But with the added health of players, the added resistance values of the stack on top of that, people are going to get their special just for super shutdown and not for general special usage. For those who don't have special ammo, they're basically dead. And that's not going to feel great, especially if one of the design goals is like getting rid of the feeling of I there was nothing I could do. But I will concede that I'm not sure if that's going to be a huge, huge deal given the timing of the extra cooldowns and all of that. But I do know also is that with the extra cooldown of supers, bubble is going to be 10 times worse than it is. Tier 1 supers are not going to exist at all in, in current Crucible. There, there needs to be a general rethink of the super cooldown system. Now you've made all the ability cooldowns longer. There's no need to have staggered tiers of super regeneration, for PvP at least. With all of that said, a lot of this is wait and see, but we got to answer a couple of questions. First of all, I think a few of you are wondering, didn't they say they had no plans to turn on checkmate for PvP? Like, where is this coming from? Why, why is this now happening? What's going on here? You're right, they did say, we have no plans to turn this on. November 30th, 2023, on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, we see a lot of speculation about Checkmate and what this means for Core Crucible. We have no plans to turn on Checkmate on across all of Crucible. Instead, we're aiming for a midway point for ability cooldowns and weapon tuning that doesn't result in sp specific weapons dom dominating. So people who played the first incarnation of Checkmate will know that it was basically hand cannon simulator, all automatic weapons felt bad. Ability cooldowns were even more nerfed than they currently were. On January 9th, they tuned down the ability cooldown penalties from 30% to 15%, and they made melee damage being increased to allow two melees to kill. In the original checkmate, it was three melee kills. Sort of very hyper-competitive year one style. On January 10th, they made another tweet thread that basically outlined what they're trying to do with checkmate. For anyone worried that these changes to Checkmate will permanently change a fun mode you enjoy, we wanted to clarify intentions for the current round of Checkmate tuning. While it is not our intention to make check the original Checkmate into the core PvP experience, we are experimenting with the current iteration of Checkmate to gather data, lessons, and feedback we can use to eventually tune the base PvP sandbox. So no, they didn't lie. They weren't. This is not out of the blue. They were always looking to tune it with the intention of moving everything over, because. Originally, I believe Checkmate was a direct result of people feed, people's feedback saying that there was too many abilities, there was too much space magic ruining the gunfights. And to be honest, that's still true. The, there's one more question that I think everybody is wondering. If you've gotten this far in the video, first of all, thank you for watching. Uh, everybody in the stream, thank you for, for sticking with me. We've been recording for an ungodly amount of time. The one question is, and this is the question that's always always comes up when they announce big, big changes like this, is will this save PvP? Let me put it this way. Let's say you had a friend. You had a friend, you liked hanging out with him all the time. You go to his house, you hang out in his living room, you make friends with his family and all of that. Then that friend says something or does something that you disagree with, he offends you, or he basically does something that is unforgivable that you don't want to be around him, so you stop hanging out with him, you stop interacting with him, you go away, you, you live your life. And then word gets around that that friend is remodeled, and the remodel is super nice, and he's got a sweet pad now, and it's so, so cool to be there. That's not going to change the fact that your friend offended you, is it? It's not going to make you want to go over. This is exactly what's happening here. It's the same thing. People who left PvP, who left Destiny 2, this is not going to get them to come back. It just won't, because this is basically remodeling. The core issues with PvP remain. The dodgy connections, the cheaters on PC, the uh, very strange 
game modes and like the experience itself, the rewards, the competitive system is a bit flimsy, trials is wishy-washy, like all of that stuff needs to change in a big way. And, and I think the PvP team knows this. The PvP Strike Force knows that they are not going to suddenly conjure up 50,000 players out of thin air. They know that, they're not idiots. But they are getting their house in order because something's coming up that's gonna bring in a lot of players back and they wanna make sure they have a good first impression to welcome everybody back. And that's the final shape. They're cleaning house. They're trying to make sure that the house is presentable, that it's welcoming for everybody, irrespective of what happened in the past. It's a good thing overall that they're trying to make changes to PvP from the state that it was, because the state that it was wasn't working for any one particular group of people. It just sort of existed. And it's existed in the same stale state since I think perhaps Beyond Light, since Stasis 3.0 came out. There have been ch changes and balances and everything like that. The one moment of time where everybody agreed PvP was utterly fantastic was the 30th anniversary DLC. Checkmate is a good cosplay of that. But of course, over time, Destiny has evolved to be more about build crafting. S Subclass 3.0 has completely changed the way players play this game. And so it made sense that they wanted that in PvP as well. However, PvP is not PvE. And what this is gonna do, these changes are gonna do, it's gonna further separate the PvE and the PvP crowd. Because you're gonna get two very, very different experiences. Now, one's gonna be all about the weapons. One is all about the builds and abilities. And personally, I think that's a good thing. Because for me, we've talked about this on this channel, I'm a weapon reviewer. I've said how many times now, weapons don't matter. Now they really bloody will matter. Every little thing is gonna matter even more now. The priority is now gonna be on hitting your bloody shots. I like the changes, personally. Overall though, I think all of this is just words. I think it's very much a wait and see. And if it works, then fantastic. And if it doesn't work, well, it was a good shot. They tried, but the worst thing would have been to have done nothing at all, right on the eve of the biggest party that the franchise has ever known. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please come around to the Twitch stream. We are live Tuesdays through Saturdays. And uh, Twitch chat is gonna show you just how degenerate they can be right now. Alas, this was a very fun thing to do. Uh, I was absolutely terrified to have done it. I really enjoyed doing it. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll do more videos like this. If you like this style of content, please uh, sound off in the comments below. I'm a Sunday Nomad and Let's hope that I can be your crucible doctor once more. See you soon. Cheers.